What's at stake for this service and its timing uh, after such a heated uh, and contentious election year that will play out again in Washington today because as this service is going on, some protests are going on, a million women march. We'll get into that in just a second. Uh, but it got a little uh, agitated yesterday. That's probably an understatement. Acton Institute President, Father Robert Sirico joining us. Father, uh, th this is a, a, a tough time and a divided time for this country. We saw it play out at the inauguration yesterday. Uh, this, this ritual, and it's, I think it's a good one, where presidents of either party uh, meet and, and gather with all religious stripes. Um, how important is it to you now and what type of message do you think it, it sends? And this has been going on since FDR's first inauguration. What kind of message do you think or do you hope it sends? Well, I, uh, prayer has been a part of the American experience uh, since its founding. In fact, in that very cathedral, there's a statue of uh, uh, George Washington praying, right? in front of the pulpit, as I recall. Uh, so I, I think this continues that tradition. Uh, certainly prayer has a way of healing. There's a lot of brokenness, as you say, a lot of division in the country. Uh, what I find remarkable is how much prayer. <laughs> I mean, you, he has set now a record for six prayers uh, on the day of the inauguration. And now, of course, continuing the tradition in the cathedral there, the National Cathedral. So uh, I think it's encouraging. If, if people can direct their attention to the transcendent, I think we get a per better perspective about what's going on here on Earth. Father, do you know uh if the president gets to pick and choose what religions are represented or who is going to say what. I only ask that because there is a representative of the Muslim faith there. Um, so all key religions, at least yes. at least nine by my count, are represented in that, in that cathedral. Well, I'm sure the president had a great deal to say about it, certainly the people he appointed. And I think it would be unconscionable had he left uh, a Muslim Muslims out of it. You have Baha'i uh, representatives there. You have Mormon. You have Roman Catholic. You have a whole array of Protestant uh, groups. Uh, it, it's really very diverse. And I think it's designed to send the message of pardon the expression, inclusivity, you know, just uh, we want to rep the, uh, represent the nation as a whole before God in prayer. So you don't think this is any accident or coincidence at all, that this is by design that the president has gone on, and is going now en route to a service where religions are represented. He got a lot of heat. And I think people put that out of context and it took what he was saying about profiling Muslims or stopping Muslims from entering this country. Uh, because obviously if, if he felt so strongly that way, he wouldn't even entertain one, one speaking or praying at this service, right? Of course, I, I, I never took uh, Trump to uh, be signaling out Islam as such. Uh, I think uh, he's not very precise in his spontaneous rhetoric as, as we've seen repeatedly. And you have to kind of come back and uh, interpret what he means or nuance what he means. Uh, uh, not. By the way, unlike the Pope, <laughs> on occasion where he'll say something and then have to kind of contextualize it. So I never, I never thought it was uh, uh, directed at, at, at a particular religion at all. Yeah, I think you're right about that, Father. Thank you very much. Very good seeing you. We are waiting outside good the National you. Cathedral for the arrival of uh, President Trump. I, I do want to uh, bring, if I can, if he is still there. If not, I understand Father Robert Sirico on this. Uh, because much has been made of all these denominations, some of which have been criticizing each other and not the issue of late. They, 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 it seems like on Inauguration Day, the major religious leaders have tried their best to keep this peaceful. Uh, Father, can you still hear me? Are you still there? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. What do you make of that, that we've heard that there was a concerted effort in planning this, knowing the controversy around then candidate Trump and then later President-elect Trump, uh, that they wanted to really bend over backwards to make this a peaceful, unified, consistently uh, apolitical event, uh, an event that the president and his motorcade has yeah. just arrived at. Um, well, and that was key to them, key to them. Well, I think it's a very important symbol. You know, even the cathedral itself had a controversy because the former bishop 
uh, objected to hosting that service there. So right within the Episcopal Church, which is not exactly I the remember most, that. Uh, you know, so, and the fact that you have Baha'i uh, sitting with Muslim there, it, people won't know the nuances of this theology, but there's a, that really came out of Islam, the Baha'ism, deeply persecuted in Iran. Uh, you have people there, uh, you know, representing a, a, a real breadth of uh, religious uh, opinion. So it itself is a symbol uh, that we can have some sense of unity when we're focusing on something above ourselves. Now, uh, Trump is not, just doesn't have the personality to uh, let it all kind of go in a politically correct manner. But uh, I think uh, there has to be a way in which we can have civil conversation across our differences. And I think the, the lowering of uh, tempers and rhetoric can help do that both on Trump's part and on the part of other people. You know, I'm sort of twisting an old line, Father, that, you know, you often find religion in a foxhole. Um, you could describe <laughs> life in the White House as being in a foxhole. And uh, even the most, uh, uh, you know, non-religious occupant or one not necessarily rabid in their faith changes quickly with the pressures and the duties, overwhelmingly uh, so, uh, yeah. in office. Uh, I think it was John Kennedy who said he did a lot of praying during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, and uh, while a, a Catholic, not a consistently practicing one at the time. So, so Ronald Reagan, much the same. I'm wondering how the office changes the man uh, down the road, the woman, uh, and, well, I, and how that plays out in, in how they do their office. I would hope that in the face of the intelligence briefings and the face of the sense of history that he has entered uh, into right now uh, or upon, uh, the sense of just looking at the mall and taking the oath of office on Lincoln's Bible, all, all of these things have a, ought to have a cumulative effect uh, on anyone and a sobering effect. and. That I would hope, and as a priest would encourage, that people then turn to God for wisdom. What, what am I doing here? Uh, what are my responsibilities here? To, to think of the decisions I will make that will affect people all around the world. So I, I think it, I hope that Mr. Trump uh, enters into this with this kind of sober uh, view. It's interesting for a man who was mocked right in, during the campaign for misquoting scripture or not knowing how to quote scripture and things like that, should have uh, designed this weekend so suffused with religious symbolism. It's civic religion, which is what point. you have to have, you know. That's a very good it, point. It's a civic oh. expression of religion, you know, and, and I like it, that. Uh, yeah. Or a religious expression of civics. Uh, Father, thank you very, very well, much. Too. And appreciate, too. appreciate your patience. The Trump family now just arriving here. The benefit 